Hi there. I'm Patrick Müller, a filmmaker from Germany. Um, most of my film is experimental filmmaking. I'm focusing on poetry and uh, the poetry of images. To do that, I'm using old cameras, mostly cameras uh, with uh, 8 mm and uh, 16 mm film. And I also love to process them myself. Everything has started when I was uh, in Paris 2006. Almost every night I went to the Cinémathèque Française there and I was watching a retrospective of expressionist German cinema. Oh, yeah, you know, um, it's not an American in, in Paris, it's a German in Paris, but um, <laughs> to, to quote the film. But this this made a huge impression to me because you for the first time I saw all those magical and good films uh, on um, 35 millimeter on a giant screen with musical accompaniment or silent cinema. And when I did that, I really um, uh, dived in to the, the pictures and the images and also the stories. For, and I and I loved, for example, uh, Monau's work, uh, Nosferatu and uh, uh, all the Ultra's films, The Last Love and Sunrise and so on. Uh, and I loved it because um, I realized how he could um, tell stories by images, how he could tell stories without sound and with editing. Um, but I also uh, saw uh, the last work of King Vider. It was called Metaphor. Metaphor was a film at a time when King Vider, Hollywood director, uh, was really old uh, and he didn't get any projects anymore from uh, film studios. So he decided not to resign, but um, to take an, a camera and film a film by himself and to make a documentary. So this was quite interesting to me um, to see in a director uh, who who didn't need any, any other person to make a film and uh, uh, he didn't care. He did what he want and he did this with really power. When I was back in Germany, um, I almost did the same same thing. Uh, I really wanted to make films. I read so much before it. Uh, I was so full of ideas. So I just take an old camcorder and uh, went to the woods and made uh, my very first film. And um, it was quite well well received. So I made another one and uh, essay film and so on. And the first ones I showed on YouTube. And then I quickly was um, uh, shown uh, some on a, a television channel and uh, also um, lots of film festivals. So this was this that helped a lot and uh, encouraged me um, to make more of my own films and to find my own my own voice out there. My last film I made uh, is a film called Into the Realm of the Night. It's a film I shot in December 2021. There was a lockdown in, in Germany, um, but uh, I was invited to a film festival in Denmark. It was the Nature and Culture Poetry Film Festival. When I was there, um, I was so happy about that because um, I took my camera, an old Bauer cam camera. It's a regular eight millimeter camera, a very solid one. And I um, was uh, in the night and uh, filmed a lot there. So I had in, in mind a bit of transition the magical transition of the day to the night. And I used it 
um, I used a lot of double exposures. So I was shooting one side and I turned um, the film stock um, and uh, shooting the other side without knowing what happens there. I had a bit in mind what I'm doing, but um, uh, I didn't, uh, I couldn't, um, uh, uh, I, I couldn't make sure what images were on film. So this was really a very powerful experience to me. And I also had a lot of problems because the cam the camera uh, got stuck several times. I had to open it. Uh, some light leaks and uh, oh, this was quite a nightmare there, but it worked out in the end and it created a kind of a horror film, but also um, a bit like an, um, yeah, it was um, a very immersive film, all the grain and my composer Uwe Rotloff from from Germany and uh, Chemnitz here, Saxony. He made a most wonderful uh, synthesizer music for it. And uh, the music and the images um, create something really magical, enigmatic. And I hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. I want to tell stories because, in my opinion, the whole world is too cerebral, I would say. So I would, I want to show people um, not only the nature, uh, the, the beauty of, of Earth and nature, but also I want to make people feel so I always try to create a kind of an immersive experience. So um, I'm using text um, and images or music, but I'm also using it to make people think a bit, but not only thinking, mostly feeling. So, because I think um, we are surrounded by so much beauty, but we don't see it anymore. Most of uh, the daily things um, which are out there, um, we don't perceive anymore. So with my filmmaking, um, with the analog filmmaking and um, the way I'm shooting, because I don't shoot, um, I don't film persons. So mostly I'm only f uh, shooting nature and um, the way I am edi editing it and uh, using it is, is different from other experimental films. When I found a new film or a new subject, um, a new text, um, which I like very much, um, I start to uh, dig a bit uh, into my soul if, it, if it's really the, um, the, the perfect film for me um, to shoot. And uh, if I have found uh, the, the perfect location for it, because most of my films are film are films on locations, on places. Um, I, for example, when I was in um, Georgia uh, in Savannah, um, there was an old cemetery, and I shot there my film, The Garden, in Lovecraft adaptation in Super 8 millimeter. Um, to show the inner soul of Lovecraft. And um, I always need a good place uh, when I start to film. So for example, um, I always, uh, I'm always a bit, uh, I, I'm always joking a bit um, that I'm like a surfer. 
a surfer only goes out for surfing when he has the perfect wave, when he feels it and when he feels that it's right for uh, for surfing. So the same is with me with filmmaking. If I don't feel that um, the idea is right and the day is right and the place is right or even uh, the camera is right that I'm using, uh, I don't go out and uh, uh, direct the film or uh, don't make it. So over the last years um, um, this worked uh, quite well for me. So for example uh, in a film I shot in 2021, an Emily Bronte film called Spellbound, um, it was so freezing cold, uh, thick flakes outside and uh, I was able to make a film about a woman that is trapped in the woods and cannot move anymore. So uh, to show the inner um, self of the woman, I was um, and I, I, I needed the perfect images for it in the wintry forest uh, where I took my 16 millimeter camera or Into the Realm of the Night, my last film in Copenhagen, I talked about it earlier. Um, it was a quite liberating um, experience for me to be there uh, outside and filming in an old amusement park in Copenhagen. And uh, it was so magical and yet a bit menacing because there was all the pandemic outside in Europe but not in Copenhagen. They had, uh, they, they opened everything there. So this was quite an interesting experience and most of my film um, are created by such coincidences that I embrace very much. In 2001, I bought a DVD of the film by Stanley Kubrick, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And um, when I watched the films, the film and uh, many others then by Stanley Kubrick, um, I was really shocked because I realized that film can be art and can be meaningful, meaningful and can be philosophical. It, it marked me really a lot this film and I saw the beauty and the technical perfection um, but also yeah how it had an, a huge impact on my life so from that uh, time on I, I, I saw film really different, really differently I also talked about um, um, Murnau, Friedrich Wilhelm Murnau German expressionist filmmaker. Um, his moral tales, for example, made in silent cinema, um, were so interesting to me. And also how he did, um, um, how he did, and how he filmed everything. Um, it was so well composed, and to me, at Murnau's films. Are the only ones that work without sound so you can uh, enjoy them in silent in silent cinema so you don't need a musical accompaniment for it because it works so well visually and from Mono um, I also learned a lot uh, from uh, in one of my favorite uh, French directors um, Eric Roma Eric Romer in French. Uh, he made lots of films, moral tales. Uh, he was hugely in inspired by Murnau and, uh, and Hitchcock. And I learned from him how, um, um, how to edit, I would say, how to edit on point and how to create effects. And um, uh, this was yeah, this, um, he makes films that are so simple, but they are only simple if you see them on first sight. If you look deeper, they are so complex. And I will, um, in my um, experimental filmmaking, I also want to do that. 
So to make films that are very, very simple, they are reduced to, uh, they are re really re reduced how, how they show images, but they are composed in a way and uh, in the final film, um, they are quite powerful and I want that people see and begin, begin to see again and anew and hopefully they will see their daily life and their environment also anew because most of them don't uh, see anymore. The film was the, the art of the 20th century. Um, uh, everything was in it, painting, music, dancing, uh, architecture, um, um, acting, there was so much in it. And in the 21st century, we have a complete new way of filmmaking. So everything has gone digital. Um, all is possible, everything's possible with CGI. If you look at some Spielberg films um, where everything is CGI, it costs a lot, mostly done in, cam in, in Canada because it, uh, it's too expensive in the uh, United States, the big productions. But my filmmaking is um, completely different. Um, I'm making experimental films, so I'm uh, in the tradition of the uh, of the old filmmakers, of the old experimental filmmakers. I love so much um, of the past also. And uh, that's why I'm also shooting with um, almost the same cameras that they were using. So the Bolex cameras, for example, you see one there here. It's uh, from 1962. Um, it's a powerful tool. You can do almost everything with it. So uh, with these old tools and to feel the physical medium of film and the grain and the beauty of the images and how you rediscover them after you have shot them, because processing takes some time, a week or so, and uh, you see them anew after that. So by doing this, um, I enjoy very much what I'm doing. So, because uh, analog filmmaking and um, and um, poetry, poetry film and immersive cinema with different uh, images um, goes very well together, in my opinion. You are asking me what co um, how has COVID affected independent filmmaking creation? I would say, yeah, <laughs> uh, now uh, when I'm recording this here in spring 2022, so at the moment here everything is open again, so no one has to wear a mask um, anymore, so uh, everything seems to be back to normal at the moment. But of course in the past two years or so, everything was changed. People couldn't shoot the, the films they want. Uh, they couldn't even travel to the locations they wanted. So, for example, with my film I shot uh, in 2021, I talked about it earlier, Spellbound, um, I shot it um, in my neighborhood, outside, and uh, I was lucky to find uh, the images there in the, in the snow. So, but I, I, uh, this was the first uh, year I, um, I didn't go to the person um, and record the lines I need um, uh, to the actor or actress, uh, but I was using an internet platform to find um, an actor for it and I did everything online. So uh, I was um, uh, contacting a, a young lady, Sarah Campton there in London, uh, an actress, and showed her the, f the poem by Emily Bronte. She was uh, happy to um, to uh, to read it and to record it and 
uh, it was uh, yeah it was quite quite wonderful i picked her amongst 200 actresses um for it and without this the film wouldn't be so great as as it was so the same with the music i couldn't meet the musician i did everything online and uh in um uh, through the phone or through the communication is with the internet um but in the end it worked and uh, it won several prizes and for example the film festivals um it changed in a good way i would say because most of the film festival i've been um with um, that film um uh, they invited me through some zoom platforms now so they did lengthy interviews of uh, 30 or 45 minutes uh, uh, on a film so nice q and a's i couldn't have um, uh, i couldn't have done that uh, in in real life so because you don't travel for a six minute film to la from germany or so um that's that makes no sense so uh, through the internet and uh the festivals that went online during the pandemic um at least some positive changes happened it sounds strange but don't see too many films in the beginning. Um, I, what I want to say is that the most impact things uh, had on me or the ideas I had were through reading. So I suggest read a lot of books, read old books and live in those worlds your friend see old paintings go to galleries watch artworks hear music but or read history books so by reading you can transcend time you can switch in other centuries you can live in the past but also connect the past with the present the second side is the filmmaking side. Uh, you need, of course, to, to use your tools, to use your camera, to record sound properly, um, and so on. So this, uh, but this can be learned by watching um, films. So for example, my f I've never attended a film school. My film school were watching was watching films. I watched hundreds, thousands of films, but not only the films uh, that I enjoy uh, in my, that were made in my, um, uh, when I lived, so, uh, um, but also films a uh, hundred years ago. So films by Méliès, films, uh, really early films, even by Louis Lumière, when the trains uh, uh, comes uh, to the to the to the station and people were jumping out of the cinema when it uh, was made so film is such a wonderful thing you have all these great works of filmmaking these great directors of course today they are all dead filmmaking is like uh, visiting a cemetery every everyone is dead but all those works remain and all the things people have achieved by making these films uh, are there and you can see it and you can create your own your own um, uh, visions and your own images by it and because you always have to uh, reinvent a bit yourself Huh? You have to find your own words. Nobody wants an, a second Fritz Lang or a second Stanley Kubrick. Nobody wants that. You have to find your own, your own um, uh, images for it and your own cinema. So go into the past and take the things you have seen in the past, connect it with yourself and make your own cinema. And another thing I want to, to
to give you, I would say, is try to go to the very end of the idea of your film. Mostly when you've made your film and have edited it, um, it's not, you didn't, you didn't um, uh, go to the end of the street, I would say. You have to go further and further and further. So you have to go f much uh, further than, than you've been in the past. And with every film, you should move on. You don't, don't repeat yourself. Try something new. Try, try your own vision and try your own filmmaking. So only then it makes sense to do this because filmmaking is really expensive. Writing is much more, much less expensive. So when you are in filmmaking, really make something good that you're proud of and mostly others will see it and um, maybe enjoy it as much as you do. Oh, my answer is a very harsh one. I don't think so in the first place. Um, because movies can be used, of course, at a propaganda movie. You have uh, uh, Eisenstein's uh, um, uh, Potemkin, for example. Um, all these films in the past. Um, you have Godard's films in the 60s. You have his... Uh, history of cinema, his, um, his essayist films, you have uh, Jean Renoir's films, The Great Grand Illusion, for example, I like very much. There are so many films that are really important and powerful, but when I look at the state of the world we are living today, with all the problems, that means overpopulation, um, few, uh, not 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 um, uh, very little resources that are left, and uh, the wars that we are facing. I don't think that uh, cinema uh, can change everything by itself. So it 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 doesn't work, and it had it hasn't happened. But what I think that cinema can do. Also, can that art can do is to make you a person that feels something, who feels something, and to uh, to make you a person who has his own mind and his own opinion. For example, um, if you watch an old film, you begin to see things differently and maybe you see also your daily life differently. So this is really a good thing if people communicate because they have watched art, because they have read books, because they have uh, went to galleries and because the biggest problem is that people don't feel anything and that they are indifferent. And to be indifferent, that's the biggest problem. You should care about other people. You should care about other nations. And only then you can work together for peace and for really a better life of all people on earth. So art can be the key, but of course it can not do, uh, do it um, only by itself. Personally, I enjoy comedies very much because they give me kind of uh, relaxation um, uh, to the w world that's happening uh, outside uh, and all the problems that I read in the newspaper. But um, 
I also enjoy to watch films that are well made, films by people who have really created an oeuvre, so a body of work, as you say in English. So, for example, one of my uh, of my uh, dearest filmmakers in the moment is uh, Robert Eggers, who made has made the film uh, Lighthouse and the, Wo and the Witch. Lighthouse was shot on um, on analog film, for example, and it's such a powerful film, almost experimental. At the moment, he's making a film, uh, The Norseman, with uh, Nicole Kidman and others, and he really finds his own way of filmmaking. So. If I see how successful, um, when I see how successful it is, I really have lots of hope that filmmaking and cinema um, will not die, really. Um, because if people like him are able to make films, and if um, small experimental filmmakers like me are able to make their films they want, and can show them on festivals um, across the, the earth. Um, that's a good thing. So I'm very, I like it very much because it's not only entertainment, um, all the good works of film are made and comes to the cinema. So we should more focus uh, on those works um, and not only speak of Marvel films. Marvel films are like going to the amusement park. That's good that they exist. People can enjoy them. But you also should see all the other wonderful work that's done by talented filmmakers um, that maybe can also change in a small um, a lot so you also asked me what has the pandemic changed people's taste yeah i would say um much more entertainment you can find much more entertainment and um i would say there um the streaming platforms um there are much more. We have now Paramount Plus and, uh, and other platforms. So that's a good thing, but hopefully we can we can um, uh, we can see in the future also the all the classics of the past. For example, all the John Ford films. I don't know where I can see films by John Ford. They don't seem to exist in the, on the streaming platforms. And that's a big problem. We have all the film history, but you are not able to see a whole retrospective by one filmmaker, only by very few. So I hope we can see through the streaming or through cinemas that still exist in big cities here in Germany and um, um, uh, museum cinemas, for example, like in Munich or Berlin. Um, these things are really important and I think they will, will exist also in the future. But of course, everything will change. And everything has to change. That in order that um, everything has to change that everything stays as it was, like uh, in uh, in the Leopard by Visconti, uh, the person said. So maybe everything has to change so that we can still see cinema and movies and enjoy them. my upcoming projects I'm um, at the moment finishing a film um, an essay film um, after the French writer Antoine de Saint-Exupéry a very philosophic film I shot on the island Malta uh, in the Mediterranean Sea and a, f um, 
it's a French uh, French essay film, and uh, I have some uh, musicians who are making a contemporary classic f um, score for it. That takes that will take some months, and in November it will have its premiere uh, in, a, in a museum here in Germany in Chemnitz. So I'm very happy about that. I will. The next film I will shoot is in July. I will do this with a um, contemporary poet, contemporary poet from uh, Ulm, Marco Keller. I've made a film with him. Actually, that's not a film. It was called in 2018. Um, so I will make a new film with him, um, and I'm really interested how how it will turn out. It will be on Super 8 and a very exper experimental one and also a film um, in, in in autumn um, that's called um, six bagatellas on eight millimeter so but i won't tell you any more about it i hope you have enjoyed very much all the um, the answers I have given you to your questions and yeah, maybe we will meet somewhere on the world at a festival or uh, you can watch my films on my homepage on my and Patrick cinema point de everything is on uh, with English subtitles and I hope you, you enjoy uh, the films I've made um, and the poetry films I've made as much as I do. Goodbye.